Welcome to the module on rigid payments. Today we will be covering uh, defects in uh, PQC part 2. Under this part, uh, basically, uh, we will be covering uh, different types of uh, cracks which are generally seen while doing the PQC. So to start with, again, uh, like uh, just to recap what is a defect is. A defect refers to the visible evidence of an undesirable condition in the pavement affecting the serviceability, structural condition or appearance. Like for example, if you see the picture, you can see that uh, the transverse lines uh, along the direction of uh, the traffic shows that the rocking is created because of the undulations between or the undulations or the level difference between the two slabs. So this is basically giving you a discomfort when the riding uh, is uh, taken place. So a visual uh, defect directly affecting the riding quality as well as the discomfort for the user of the road. Defects in a rigid pavement, uh, as we have seen earlier also, there are four predominant modes of distress in rigid pavement. First one is cracking, second one is deformation, third one is surface texture deficiency, and the fourth one we will be discussing is joint sealant defects. Today in this module, we will take up cracking in detail, different types of cracking like block cracks, corner cracks, diagonal cracks, longitudinal cracks, sinkage cracks, and transverse cracks. Under this cracking, we will be covering uh, the three basic steps, like what is a block crack or what, uh, what the description of uh, the cracks, the possible causes of the crack, and then the remedial actions one can take for the cracking. So as discussed earlier, we will start with the block crack first. Then slowly we will cover the other types of cracks that is diagonal crack, corner crack, longitudinal crack, sinkage crack and transverse cracks generally seen in the rigid pavement or the pavement quality concrete. As discussed earlier, the cracks we will be discussing in uh, three stages like first we will describe what the crack it is in terms of description then we will check the possible causes of this uh, defects or distress in the pqc and then the recommended remedies uh, one can have in order to correct these defects in the pqc when we talk about the block cracks, these are the interconnected cracks forming a series of blocks approximately rectangular in shape, commonly distributed over the full pavement. The possible causes of uh, creation of black, uh, block cracks are insufficient slab thickness or settlement of subgrade or subbase, and if the advanced stage of the pavement life cycle has achieved. These are the three possible uh, causes for uh, generation of uh, block cracks in the PQC. The recommended remedies are narrow cracks in unreinforced slab and medium cracks in all slabs will need to be sealed or stitched with crack repair materials. Wide cracks will necessitate either a bay replacement repair or a full depth repair. When we talk about the sealing, the sealing can be done with a suitable material like for example in this photograph we have been showing the polysulfide sealant which is being used as a sealing material to fill the cracks which is being developed on top of the PQC. Second is the stitching where if you see a crack then on either side of the crack you need to Insert the reinforcement in a diagonal direction making an angle of 30 to 45 degrees and crossing the cracking portion so that once it is being grouted, the 
cracked portion and the slab will be connected with the help of the reinforcement which is being laid. And the third portion or the third method is the replacement method. It can be a panel replacement or it can be a bay replacement. In either cases, the dowel bars and the tie bars needs to be positioned once again at the space required and then the concreting will be done with the same grade of concrete which is being earlier used to lay the pavement quality concrete. And in this particular case, you need to compact it using the manual uh, vibrators, the needle vibrators, and the foundation or the base needs to be compacted properly and light sprinkling of water should be done before laying the concrete. Now coming to the second type of uh, crack under discussion is basically the corner cracks in which a corner of the panel gets uh, cracked or sometimes uh, it gets settled and it generally uh, peers off or takes uh, into two parts from the main slab as shown in the figure. The description of the corner cracks are crack linking a transverse joint to the slab edge or a longitudinal joint. The possible causes are lack of uh, low transfer of the joints, the doll bar restraint near the edge of the slab, or sometimes ingress of solids into the joints at the edge of the slab, thereby restricting the movement of the slab when the traffic is uh, plying. Acute angles in non-rectangular slabs or loss of a sub-base supports. These are the possible causes under which a corner crack generally develops and to repair or recommended remedies to rectify the corner cracks are it needs to have a transverse or full depth repair. So what is required is the complete panel where the cracking is being done needs to be removed and then at suitable positions, you can insert the dowel bars and tie bars before laying the concrete. One more precaution one should take is before laying the concrete after the removal of the cracked slab, the base needs to be recompacted using small vibrators. And then with light sprinkling of water, you can lay the concrete. The next crack which is uh, taken for discussions are uh, diagonal cracks which are normally seen in the PQC or the rigid pavements. You can see in the backdrop of uh, the photograph like there are cracks developed. One of the crack is the diagonal cracks and the other cracks are the transverse and the sinkage cracks which is visible in this particular photograph. Now. Coming to again the three models of uh, defining the crack, like uh, we will talk about the description first, then the possible causes of the diagonal cracks, and then the recommended remedies of the diagonal cracks. The description of the diagonal cracks, if you see, it is multidirectional cracks in the slab, which are neither generally transverse nor longitudinal, nor across the corners of the bay. So in that conditions you can define or designate the cracks as the diagonal cracks. The possible causes of uh, the diagonal cracks are shrinkage of slabs during curing associated with the excess slab length or joints saw cutting being done too late. Second possible cause is settlement of uh, the sub base or the subgrade and the third is rocking of slab or insufficient slab thickness. The recommended remedies uh, for uh, correcting the diagonal cracks are narrow cracks in unreinforced slabs and medium cracks in all slabs needs to be sealed properly the moment it is being observed in the slab. Even if it is narrow, it has to be attended properly because if unattended, it will lead to the disastrous conditions of uh, the pavement. Then the second method is you can stitch the cracks uh, with the repair uh, materials, the suitable repair materials. And the wide cracks will necessitate either a bay replacement repair or a full depth repair. That means 
you have three conditions of uh, repair one is the sealing second is stitching and the third one is the replacement so sealing can be done with uh, different types of materials uh, like in this particular photograph uh, we have used uh, the bituminous material to seal the cracks in the earlier slides we have seen uh, polysulfide sealant used as a, a sealing of cracks so all these materials which are suitably utilized can be used to seal the cracks but necessarily the sealing materials should be elastic in nature it should not be rigid because if it is rigid then the movement of the vehicles uh, will develop the stresses in the sealing materials and it will crack and peel off once again and when we talk about the stitching uh, like uh, earlier we have seen the rods being uh, drilled down now you can see the schematic diagram of how the rods are inserted possibly it should be crossing the crack at the center of uh, the slab thickness and alternately laid the angle with which the drilling has to be done should be at an angle of 35 to 45 degrees and the diameter of the bar can be suitably chosen in order to make sure that uh, the load transfer is happening properly and the bond between the two cracked surfaces or the two separated pieces of uh, rigid pavements are tied up with uh, rigidity the next uh, crack which is under discussion can be the longitudinal cracks the longitudinal cracks are basically running uh, parallel to the direction of the traffic it is all along uh, the length of the road as you can see in the photograph behind now to describe the longitudinal cracks the longitudinal cracks are the unconnected cracks running longitudinally along the pavement is known as the longitudinal cracks the possible causes could be the differential settlement between the two panels the lateral sinkage associated with excessive slab width leading to a longitudinal crack and the recommended remedies uh, to correct the longitudinal cracks are narrow cracks in reinforced slab requires no immediate action but narrow cracks in unreinforced slabs and medium cracks in slabs of all types should be remedied by means of uh, stitching sealing and the suitable crack repair materials wide cracks in all slabs should be remedied either by a longitudinal full depth repair or by means of a bay replacement repair methodologies coming to the next uh, type of crack that is uh, the shrinkage crack shrinkage cracks are uh, very small very narrow in uh, shape and uh, propagates immediately after the completion of the pqc being laid and if proper curing is not started immediately then you can see the effect of shrinkage of concrete in terms of cracking the description of shrinkage cracks if you see it is short and oblique in direction and characteristically do not normally extend to the edges of the slab initially they are comparatively shallow in depth but as a result of subsequent heating and cooling or wetting and drying it is likely that some at least will eventually extend across the full width and through the full depth of the slab and the possible causes are the only one cause that is inadequate curing so if we have sufficient curing effective curing then the chances of developing a shrinkage crack in the pqc will be minimized or can be eliminated the recommended remedies are very minor narrow plastic shrinkage cracks may be self annealing and consequently require no remedial treatments but sealing of cracks is important full depth repair or a demolition and reconstruction of the slab by means of bay replacement or repair is possible if some of the shrinkage cracks have been transformed into the medium or the wider cracks 
So monitoring, monitoring the sinkage cracks is very important and necessary. And the moment you see that there is a change in the width of the cracks as far as the sinkage cracks are concerned, immediately that is required to be attended by means of sealing. The moment you seal it, it will not allow any ingress of water, thereby it will not have the tendency to further grow in its own dimensions. As you see, the untreated cracks, the untreated cracks on the left hand side of your screen, it is allowing water. So thereby the blue lines which you see is basically the water movement coming through the crack portions of either it is a concrete portion or the asphalt portion. But now today we are discussing mainly the concrete part. So what happens is these water flows through the roots of the cracks and enters into the your subgrade and embankment levels up to that, thereby damaging your subbases and the base materials. That is the reason why it is very important to treat the sinkage cracks the moment you feel that these cracks are popping up or getting widened enough to address the situation. So the sealing of the sinkage crack, the moment it starts exp expanding, it can be either a polysulfide sealant or a bituminous emulsion material. The number of materials available in the market, which one of the suitable material can be taken to seal the crack as early as possible. The early it is, the better it is. And the only requirement is it should be elastic in nature. The material with which you are feeling the cracks should be elastic in nature so that with the movement of the vehicle, any movement observed in the cracked portions, the material should be sufficient enough to take that moment of compression and tension and will not pop up out of the cracked surfaces. The next crack which we will be discussing is the transverse cracks. The possible uh, causes and the recommended remedies of the transverse cracks needs to be discussed. We'll start with the description of the transverse cracks. Cracks or break running transversely across the pavement or the slabs are generally known as the transverse cracks. The possible causes of the transverse cracks are shrinkage of slab during the curing, association with uh, contraction joints being sawn too late or excessive slab length, dowel bar restraint at the joints, that means displaced dowel bars or uh, dowel bars being placed in the wrong directions, all those uh, will restrain the movement of uh, the slab. Sub-base restraint, that is the lack of uh, separation layers or excessive irregularity of uh, the sub-bases, insufficient slab thickness, and rocking developing during joint movements. Case of unmatched joints in uh, two parallel slabs is one of the area where you see the rocking portion is being developed. Now the recommended remedies are Medium width cracks form a groove or a seal. Wide cracks transfers full depth repair or full bay construction is possible. So depending upon the width of the crack, the remedies can be recommended. But generally, if you see the cracks are starting from uh, narrow width, slowly it moves to the medium width and then to the wide width. It is very rare that the first, at first instant only, the cracks are seen in a wider direction. That is only possible when there is a really a very bad workmanship as far as the structure is concerned. Like there is a very poor compaction of uh, concrete, uh, poor compaction of their base or sub-base materials. 
then only the wide cracks develop uh, immediately but otherwise generally uh, the cracking width starts from the medium crack and it is therefore very important that without neglecting the medium cracks even the slightly more than the narrow cracks also needs to be sealed immediately because if you are not sealing it if you are allowing the water to pass through it the change in weather conditions will change the dimensions of the crack width because of the expansion and contractions and thereby leading to the conversion of your narrow wide narrow width cracks to the medium or the wide cracks so to summarize this module we talked about the definition of defects in rigid pavement we talked about the types of cracks in pqc the possible causes of cracking of pqc the recommended methods to rectify the defects in the pqc do tune in for more updates thank you thank you very much for watching